Number 10. Lost Amazon Cities The Amazon rainforest isn't exactly the place you'd expect to find an ancient metropolis. It's all jaguars and jungle vines, not city blocks. Or so we thought. Enter the laser. Archaeologists used LIDAR, basically laser vision from airplanes, to peer beneath the dense Amazon canopy, and BAM, be uncovered over 6,000 interconnected earthen platforms in Ecuador. Yep, cities in the jungle, dating back around 2,000 years. For ages, people assumed the Amazon was too harsh for big settlements, like trying to build a sandcastle in a swamp. But these ancient builders were resourceful. They sculpted the land into raised platforms and suspiciously organized shapes, sort of like a tropical version of a Maya city. Think plazas and causeways where we only saw trees. Growing food in rainforest soil is tough, thanks to relentless rain, but apparently these civilizations figured it out and thrived. It's a plot twist that's making archaeologists scratch their heads and delightedly rewrite textbooks. We went looking for El Dorado legends, and instead scientists found actual lost city networks hiding under centuries of leaves. Basically, the Amazon has been playing SimCity behind their backs, and we're just now catching up. Who knew the rainforest had such urban jungle secrets? It's as if the ancient world said challenge accepted and built a city where nobody thought one could exist. Now, the myth of the untouched Amazon is officially busted. Turns out it had neighbors all along. Your move, History Channel. Number 9. Nazca Lines Galore If you thought the mysterious Nazca Lines in Peru were a solved puzzle, think again. They just got a lot more complicated, in a good way. For decades, we knew of roughly 400 of these giant desert doodles, you know, those massive geometric lines and animal shapes etched into the ground that had everyone yelling aliens at their TV. Well, aliens didn't make them, but guess who helped find more of them? AI. In 2024, researchers unleashed an AI to scan aerial images of the Peruvian desert, and it identified 303 new geoglyphs in just six months. 303. That's almost like discovering seasons two and three of a show you thought was canceled. These newly found ancient drawings include humans, animals, and shapes, adding to the Nazca people's already impressive collection of sand art. Some look like giant snakes. Others could be ancient smiley faces, for all we know. The best part? Many of these were hiding in plain sight, feigned and eroded, until the computer said, enhance, and there they were. So the desert wasn't done sharing its secrets. It had bonus content. This discovery means archaeologists will be busy for years, mapping lines and figuring out why on Earth, literally on Earth, these pre-Inca people went, let's drop big pictures that only sky gods or our future selves can see. One thing's certain, the Nazca app time, imagination, and possibly a cheeky sense of humor. And now, thanks to artificial intelligence, we're seeing their full portfolio. It's like the ancient world's version of an art drop, 2,000 years late. Aliens, you can sit down. The Nazca and some nerdy AI just schooled you. Number 8. Rebel Sword Stash Imagine you're exploring a desert cave by the Dead Sea, and instead of finding dust and back guano, you stumble on a 2nd century weapon stash like you've hit the archaeological jackpot. That's basically what happened in a Judean desert cave. Archaeologists discovered four remarkably well-preserved swords hidden behind stalactites. Yes, swords wood, leather scabbards, and all, just hanging out for about 1900 years in dry, preserved perfection. It turns out, during a Jewish revolt against Rome, around AD 132 to 136, some rebels apparently said, BRB, hiding our loot, and wedged these swords in a crevice, and then never came back? The dry cave air was the ultimate time capsule, so when modern scientists found them, the blades looked battle-ready, not rusted into oblivion. We're talking about weapons likely snatched from Roman soldiers or battlefields, then stashed by rebels who probably planned to return for their secret arsenal. It's the ancient equivalent of burying your guns before the enemy comes, except nobody remembered to dig them up later. Oops. For archaeologists, this is Christmas morning. The sword's metal, wood, and leather are so intact that researchers can analyze where and when they were made. For the rest of us, it's a vivid peek into a rebel drama from antiquity, a bit like opening a lost Fallout loot crate in real life. It also proves that sometimes the best hiding spot is a random cave in the middle of nowhere. Just be sure to leave a note for your descendants, or else someone in the future, hi us, will claim your stuff. 
In short, this find is equal parts national treasure and ancient IDK who left us here, and it's rewriting what we know about guerrilla warfare 2,000 years ago. Talk about sticking it to the Romans and then ghosting. Number 7. The Egyptian Pregnancy Test You know how modern pregnancy tests involve peeing on a stick and waiting for that weird digital face to judge you? Ancient Egyptians had their own version, and it involved barley. Yep, in one of the oldest documented medical practices, dating back to around 1350 BCE, women would pee on a handful of barley and wheat seeds, then wait a few days. If the barley sprouted, congrats, it's a boy. If the wheat sprouted, girl. If nothing sprouted, you're probably just bloated. Shockingly, in 1963, because of course someone tried this, researchers found that this method might have actually worked about 70% of the time. Why? Estrogen in the urine of pregnant women may actually promote seed growth. Translation, the ancient Egyptians accidentally invented a form of bioassay 3,000 years before science caught up. They had no idea what hormones were, but they did know their wheat from their wheatless. It's weirdly genius. Imagine walking into a doctor's office, and instead of a blood test, they hand you a sack of grain and say, water it with your bladder. It also says something hilariously dark about ancient OBGYN appointments. Hi, yes, please urinate on these crops. No, not because we're out of ideas, because we're ahead of them. Honestly, it's a miracle we ever stopped doing this, or maybe we just couldn't handle the wait time. Either way, chalk this up as one of those moments where ancient ingenuity walks the line between brilliant and bonkers, and still kind of wins. Number six, the soundproof temples. Stone buildings from 2,000 years ago weren't exactly known for their acoustic excellence. They weren't out here winning Grammy Awards. But it turns out, some ancient civilizations were way more into sound design than anyone expected. One standout? The ancient Maya. Archaeologists studying the Temple of Kukul Khan at Chichen Itza realized that clapping at the base of the staircase sends back an echo that mimics a bird call, specifically the Ketsa, a sacred bird in Maya mythology. Like, not kinda sounds like it, it's a sonic dead ringer. Coincidence? Nope. Researchers now think it was intentionally engineered that way. A stone staircase that echoes like a god bird. Basically, they built a soundboard into a temple before microphones were even a twinkle in Edison's eye. Another freaky one? In Peru's Chabin de Guantar temple complex, archaeologists found that some chambers have acoustic properties that amplify or distort human voices, likely for religious ceremonies that felt supernaturally immersive. In modern terms, they made ancient surround sound, possibly to blow people's minds or make the gods seem more real. Imagine hearing your priest whisper, and it echoes like he's inside your skull. That's psychological manipulation with a subwoofer attached. So while modern concert halls still struggle with acoustics, ancient civilizations casually built temples that doubled as audio illusions. Your AirPods could never. Number 5. Ancient Brain Surgery no big deal. Let's set the scene. You've got a splitting headache. Not metaphorically, literally. Your skull is cracked. Your only option? Let a guy with a bronze knife cut a hole in your head. On purpose. Welcome to the world of ancient trepanation. This practice, which sounds like medieval horrorcore, actually goes back over 7,000 years, and it was surprisingly common. But here's a plot twist. It often worked, like really well. In 2023, researchers examining skulls from a 5th century BCE burial site in Israel found not just one, but two individuals who'd survived serious cranial surgery, including a child with a hole cleanly bored into a skull and bone regrowth indicating healing. That means he didn't just survive, his brain toughed it out like a champ. Trepanation wasn't just one crazy civilization's idea. It popped up all over, Peru, Egypt, Europe, even Siberia. And they weren't just stabbing blindly. The holes were often done with precision that modern surgeons might side-eye in respect. Why? Maybe to relieve pressure from brain injuries, maybe to let evil spirits escape, or maybe because some ancient doctor got way too confident after one good Yelp review. The weirdest part? Survival rates in some regions were as high as 80%. That's not accidental success. That's rudimentary neuroscience. No anesthesia, no antibiotics, 
just vibes and possibly beer. And yet, here we are today, struggling to get through dental work without emotional support animals. These people were out here removing parts of skulls and walking it off. Sometimes the ancient part of ancient civilization really just means we were bolder, grosser, and somehow better at surviving it. Number four, the Sumerian space math. Okay, brace yourself. The world's first advanced trigonometry might not belong to the Greeks. It might actually belong to ancient Babylonian math nerds. In 2017, a small clay tablet known as Plimpton 322 was reanalyzed using modern math and, surprise, it didn't contain boring lists. It held a trigonometric table created over a thousand years before Pythagoras ever picked up a protractor. And here's the kicker. It used base 60, not base 10. 60, like a clock. That's right. These Mesopotamians didn't just invent writing and the wheel. They basically made an Excel sheet for triangles centuries before Greece said, what if we just angle some stuff? Their trick system was more accurate than modern ones in some cases because they weren't stuck with our awkward decimals. They had a smooth base 60 system that let them calculate ratios with no recurring fractions. Scientists now think this system may have been used to build complex architecture or plan land divisions with mind-melting accuracy. Basically, the Sumerians weren't just vibing in the desert. They were crunching cosmic math like it was Sudoku, and we didn't even notice until 2017. Your geometry teacher was lying when they said trigonometry started with the Greeks. Turns out the Babylonians were out here doing hyper-nerd math thousands of years ago and just casually left it on a clay tablet like, here, human future, try to keep up. And we didn't for 3,700 years. Number three, Atlantis? No, just Doggerland. Imagine you're living in a place with rich farmland, rivers, wildlife, and great fishing. Now imagine the entire place just vanishes under the ocean. Nope, not Atlantis, Doggerland. This massive stretch of land once connected Britain to mainland Europe. Think Stone Age Londoners taking a weekend stroll to Germany, no boat needed. Then, sometime around 6200 BCE, the whole place got absolutely wrecked by rising sea levels and a mega tsunami likely triggered by a massive landslide off the coast of Norway, the Storega Slide, for the nerds in the back. Scientists only started taking Doggerland seriously in the last few decades, using sonar mapping, underwater sediment cores, and now, actual dredged up artifacts from the North Sea. We're talking Mesolithic tools, animal bones, human remains, all being dragged up by oil rigs and fishing boats like it's no big deal. In 2023, marine archaeologists even mapped out what appeared to be riverbeds, hilltops, and entire settlement zones down there. So yes, humans lived in what is now ocean, and not just passed through, lived, thrived. Then the climate changed, the sea rose, and nature basically said, you've been evicted, good luck. Entire civilizations were swallowed, and the survivors had to migrate to higher ground. Hello, early British Isles. It's like Atlantis, but with fewer crystals and more inconvenient facts. Doggerland flips the whole ancient civilization narrative by showing how climate chaos erased what could have been a major player in human prehistory. And we only noticed recently because, apparently, it was under our fishing nets the whole time. Next time someone says the sea level rising isn't a big deal, remind them, yeah, that's what Doggerland said. Number 2. The Pyramid Power Grid Theory Okay, let's tread carefully. No, the pyramids weren't power plants in the Tesla sense, but there is weird math going on. The Great Pyramid of Giza, that giant stone flex of ancient Egypt, has long been assumed to be just the tomb. But in recent years, physicists started poking around and found that this tomb might have some freaky electromagnetic properties. In 2018, a group of Russian and German scientists modeled how radio waves interact with the pyramid and discovered it concentrates electromagnetic energy in its chambers and under the base. That's right, it focuses energy in a way that feels less like a burial chamber and more like a very bored physicist fever dream. No, it's not beaming electricity to alien starships or whatever Reddit says, 
but it does suggest that the structure wasn't randomly built and that maybe, just maybe, the ancient Egyptians knew a little something about resonance frequencies or material conductivity, even if they didn't write pyramid equals power in hieroglyphs. To be clear, the science is real. The interpretation is cautiously speculative. But come on, a giant stone structure that channels energy? That's the stuff of sci-fi. And yet it's sitting right there, older than almost anything we've built, humming with invisible waves like it's trying to charge your Wi-Fi. Even if it was accidental, a big if, it means these people either had freakish engineering instincts or were doing something we still don't fully understand. One way or another, the pyramids are giving us middle fingers from the past like, oh, you invent a Bluetooth? Cute. We built a stone battery with our bare hands. Number one, the secret ingredient was teeth? Let's end on something truly unsettling because of course we are. In 2024, bioarchaeologists studying Neolithic grave sites in modern-day Turkey discovered something that made even seasoned researchers go, wait, what? They found human teeth, not buried in skulls, but strung into necklaces, embedded in tools, and yes, even worn as jewelry. That's right, some ancient people didn't just bury the dead, they accessorized with them. Now, before you go full Hannibal Lecter, let's clarify. This wasn't some mask Hannibal cult, we think. These were likely family members or respected elders whose teeth were pulled post-mortem and lovingly turned into amulets. Scientists suspect this was symbolic, maybe the equivalent of carrying grandma's ashes in a locket, but, you know, chewier. It turns out Neolithic folks had deeply emotional, complicated relationships with the dead. They didn't just mourn, you might say they molared. But wait, it gets darker. Isotope analysis shows the teeth came from specific age ranges and were selectively pulled, like they were choosing premium emotional baggage? Some of these ornaments even show signs of wear, like they were used in rituals or worn daily. Imagine walking around with Uncle Larry's bicuspid on a leather thong. And we thought the Victorians were weird. It's discoveries like this that remind us ancient civilizations weren't just primitive survivalists. They were emotionally complex, symbol-loving, deeply human weirdos just like us. Only difference, they express their grief by turning body parts into accessories. Your great aunt might have kept grandpa's watch. These folks, they kept his molars. Chew on that.